You have not run so far that his arm cannot reach you. You have not sinned so much that his heavenly throne cannot hear you when you cry out. You have not dug so deep down into the darkness and the miry pit that his mercy cannot pull you out. The way of Christ is a way of weakness and it begins by being like a child. John 3.3, 3, Jesus says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is like, oh, how can I be born again unless there, I go in my mother's womb, was really, really confused. Matthew 18.3 says, unless you become like a child. How is a child? Desperate, weak, and needy. Christianity begins by you being like a spiritual child in desperation. Number two, then, then you kind of get going off to a rough start. Because Jesus says in John 12, 24, and 25, unless the, the seed falls into the ground and dies, it, it, it doesn't do anything. And, and, and so in Luke 9, 23, and 24, Jesus says, if you're going to come after me, you're going to take up your cross, you're going to deny yourself and die daily. And he who wants to gain his life, Luke 9, 24, must lose his life. So you start as a child, and then it kind of gets worse from there. If you're going to follow the way of Christ, you're going to live a life of self-sacrifice, self-denial, weakened, dependent, lowly. But then you continue in utter dependence. John 15, 5, Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 12, it's so beautiful. Paul says that your Christian life is the constant dying of Jesus happening in you so that life can work in others. 2 Corinthians 4.12, this is the way of Christianity. Death constantly happening in you so that again, life and the gospel of life can be promoted within others. Continue in utter dependence. Moving to glory and weakness. Paul's, uh, man, his testimony of glorying in his weakness, 2 Corinthians 12.9 is remarkable. Because it's in his weakness, as we pursue Christ in continual need and desperation, that Christ's strength is brought forward. I already mentioned 1 Timothy 1.15, where Paul's saying, yeah, he came to save sinners and praise God for that because I'm the worst of all the sinners. I'm like the dregs and the scum of humanity. Paul uh, didn't have a very good self-esteem, but, um, but he knew the way was weakness and he was willing to glory in that weakness so that he could know the strength and salvation that God provides. Let me say it this way. The more you keep at a distance what is true of your soul, the more you keep at a distance the salvation do you, the rescue do you, the deliverance do you. Some people keep away from relationships and uh, discipleship relationships because they're, they're un, un, unnatural. They're unnatural to all of us, friends, because we're all humans that want our own protection. And they're unnatural. They, they don't know. And, and, but in so doing, that isolation keeps the deliverance, the salvation that God would have for you. And so we have lives of openness so that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And, and lastly, the way of weakness is a race to the bottom. First is last, last is first. Mark 10, 30, uh, 43 and 44 is uh, Jesus says, look, if you're gonna be great in my kingdom, you're gonna be the slave of all. You're gonna be a slave of all. Slave to your spouse, slave to those that you're around, slave to your neighbors. You're gonna serve other people like Jesus came to serve. You're going to serve the church. You're going to serve in disciple making. You're going to serve in evangelism. You're going to serve other people. And it is, my friend, a race to the bottom. This is the way of weakness. This is what it means to be in Christ. And that's why with such beauty and power, he tells us that this is how it starts. The good news is for the poor, prisoner, blind, and oppressed. And then it continues in this way of weakness as we trust in him in every way. But for the soul that is searching and hurting this morning... For the one that comes in here this morning just staggering into your seat, I have a word of hope for you. You're thinking, I, but, but not me. I've gone too far. I've done too much. I, I, I want to encourage you that he is able to save to the uttermost. You have not run so far that his arm cannot reach you. You have not sinned so much that his heavenly throne cannot hear you when you cry out. You have not dug so deep down into the darkness and the miry pit that his mercy cannot pull you out. You have not hid so long that he cannot find you. 
You have not wallowed so long in the mire that his holiness cannot wash you perfectly clean. And you have not fought so hard that his grace and generosity cannot win you. He will and he does. So for you hurting soul, hurting heart, maybe Charles Spurgeon will encourage you. Just as it says here, Luke 4.10, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Make room in your heart for Jesus. Make room in your heart for Jesus now. My master wants room, Spurgeon says. And I, as a herald, cry aloud, room for my Savior, room for my Savior. Is there a room for my Master? Is there room for him? The Son of God has been made flesh. Is there room for him here? He is the one who can forgive all sins. Have you room for him in your life? He is the one who can take you up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay. Have you room for him? Here is he who, when he comes into your soul, will never go out again and will abide with you forever to make your heart a heaven of joy and bliss through his presence. Have you room for him? All he asks for is room. Your emptiness, your nothing, your lack is all that he needs because all that he's looking for is room. And he will come and dwell and he'll come and save, and he'll come and free, and he'll come and renew. Merry Christmas.